Alright folks, Portuguese idiot, we are back. Like our case on Facebook, let's head on to chapter number two. Thank you all for the 80 plus viewers we have right now. Ace, I'm glad to have kept my son out of school today. Given that a Fairview high school student was just murdered, we found Vicky Lopez disfigured by acid and strangled in a classroom. We've discarded the possibility of it being a Rocky Cow Killer's work, but yeah, Ace, there's an incident at the driving movie theater. It involves a student from Fairview High. The driving, what's going on, Chief? The girl interrupted the screening by climbing on a car, shouting about your victim and threatening to kill herself. Oh, great suicide threats in connection with Vicky's murder. I'm ready, Ace. We're checking this out. Don't try to stop me. I've decided to end my life in a blaze of flames. Oh, wait. I gotta do it in her voice. Don't try and stop me. I've decided to end my life in a blaze of flames. I'm gonna be so drama. Oh, no, Ace. It's Chelsea. Listen, honey. We can talk this through. Oh, there's nothing to talk about. I refuse to live in a world without Vicky. Okay, Chelsea. All that match will do is set your hair on fire. Please, just put it out. Oh, secret agent Ace, I just can't take it anymore. This was Vicky's favorite place, and I'm overwhelmed with memories and guilt. Vicky knew she was gonna die. Last time we were here, her Bucci wallet was stolen. She said it was a sign that someone was after her. I should have listened. Now, now, Chelsea, it's unlike that Vicky was killed for her designer wallet. Listen, someone will drive you home, and everything will look better in the morning, okay? She can't be a killer, she's too naive. Phew, Chelsea may be a little fun to drama, but suicide is real danger at this age. I don't want to see another kid get hurt. And you're right, Chelsea also gave us a hot lead. Vicky loves this driving. We should look around for clues. Yeah, man, her her friend, man, the chick that died, I mean her mom looks old AF, and she looks she looks like she's not a teenager. She looks like she could be like college. So we got a license plate, three, pendant, oh, I see the wallet, the wallet's going to be a clue as well, oh the trash can's going to be a clue, yep, I agree, the murdering students were definitely takes us back to university in season one. He said, neither was a driving theater in Grimsboro, but I'm a net films in my net, net films in my jammies kind of gal. The place was popular with the kids, though. Any good finds? Yeah, you don't want to say Netflix. Well, look at that pendant necklace. Nothing says Vicky, I love you, like a giant golden heart studded with rubies. Did Vicky have a boyfriend? Well, there's some stain on the necklace. That should tell us more. What's with that wall? There's nothing in it. We have bigger fish in front of Oh, stupid me, you're right. Vic Chelsea said Vicky's Gucci wallet was stolen here. This must be the one. Maybe testing for fingerprints will, will reveal the thief. And you want to search that old trash can too? Well, Jones told me you like that. Alright, let's see the youth of Grimm's Road tosses away. And Jones is always pissed that I dug through trash cans. It's like, come on. Come on. Have you ever watched a TV show? You always dig through the trash. It is what it is, man. Oh, there we go. Ace, that's a bottle of sulfuric acid. The same substance that Vicky was attacked with. You see, he was discarded by the killer. I should send this bottle to Rupert. Just don't get any of that acid on your fingers. Whenever I'm worried about this, I wonder if the boyfriend's actually a girlfriend. Fingerprints to the lab and see who stole Vicky's wallet. We got a bunch of stuff that we're sending over to the lab. Which means. Which means more. more cash to speed up. Ace, 
I'm intrigued to know who gave this necklace to Vicky, and now that you've isolated the substance, the microscope might have the answer. The best thing that came out of this case was uh, my channeling my inner cheerleader. Yeah, for those guys just tuning in, you guys missed my uh, channeling of the inner cheerleader. You guys can ask chat how uh, how they liked uh, my my inner cheerleader. We'll probably see my inner cheerleader come out a little bit later. So the substance on Vicky's necklace was perfume, a scent called Moulin Rose. Hang on, I remember Chelsea was enveloped in a sweet aroma when we spoke to her. I just thought it was the scent of dramatic exaggeration. Could Chelsea have been given this necklace to Vicky? That goes a bit beyond being at BFFs. You're right, Ace. We better check up on Chelsea and ask her about this. Yep, you guys are going to get it. You're going to get the channeling. <sighs> Secret Agent Ace. <laughs> I don't know what came over me before. I'm normally not a drama llama at all. I'm glad you're feeling better, but just a quick question about this necklace. Is there anything you haven't told us about you and Vicky? Well, if you must know, Secret Agent Ace, I was in love with Vicky. No jewelry could do her beauty justice. Told you guys. I saw us as the first same-sex power couple of cheerleading in the history of the Grim Badgers. Wait, so you told her about your feelings? Yes, but Vicky turned me down. She said she loved me, but not like that. She was obviously in denial, Secret Agent Ace. Still, her rejection hurt me. I spat out my chewing gum and tore that necklace off her neck. And now Vicky's dead, and she'll never realize she was in love with me all along. Oh boy, it ain't easy to be young and in love for the first time. Yep, knew that was going to be happening. She was way too, way too involved. Guys, the fingerprints results on the victim's wallet were quite a surprise. None of them, as expected, belonged to Vicky herself. But I found another set that matches a suspect from one of your old case files, Ace. Yes. Who is it? Ah, old well, old case, interesting. It was before your time, Gloria, or even mine. I was still in college five years ago. The case of what? Twelve-year-old boy who accidentally killed his best friend. He went to juvie for a year. What? It's Julian! Well, guess what? The prints on Vicky's wallet belong to the same boy, Julian Ramis. He's now 17 years old and goes to Fairview High. Oh, snap! A Fairview student with a murder conviction? Well, now we're talking. Ace, I sure want to know what this Julian was doing with Vicky's wallet. Dude, I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think Julian was going to return. What a shock. That's awesome. That is awesome. Ace, I've examined this bottle of sulfuric acid you found at the drive-in. The concentration is consistent with your victim's injuries. So the killer tried to discard the bottle far from the school. I bet they thought they were being clever. Not clever enough to wear protective gloves when handling the bottle, which is how they left traces of ginger beer on the label. Contrary to its name, ginger beer is a non-alcoholic soft drink. It was invented in Yorkshire in the mid-18th century, allegedly by a couple of miners who... Blink twice if you want me to save you, Ace. Can I do it like a million times? Rupert may never stop talking about Yorkshire without intervention. Hush, young whippersnapper. But if you remember one thing I said, Ace, let it be this. The killer left ginger beer on the bottle. Knowing our killer drinks ginger beer is all we need. Good work, boys. And you're right, Ace. With this new evidence in mind, we better drop by the school cafeteria. Dude, I'm still, I'm still a little rattled by Julian popping up again. Yeah, I'm glad you were able to catch me live. That's all awesome. Hey, I recognize you, Secret Agent Ace. You're the detective who put me in prison all those years ago. You're here to ruin my life some more? Well, actually, we're here because one of your classmates was murdered. Oh, is that the serial killer again? I've heard they're still on the loose, but your grasp is strong if you think I know anything about a Secret Agent Ace. Well, this has nothing to do with the serial killer. Do you recognize this wallet, Julian? Um, yeah, it looks like the wall of Vicky Lopez flashes around. Preppy New York chick. Cheerleader, too. I've seen her at the Badger matches. What? Wait, you mean it's Vicky who got murdered? You think I had something to do with it? 
the cafeteria and give it back to her, that's all. Secret Agent Ace, I haven't had a single run in the law in four years, just a detention for chewing gum, that's it. Not sure I believe you, dude. Not sure I believe you. Nah, ginger beer isn't, isn't um, it doesn't have any alcohol content in it. cheerleader and the killer supports the Grim Badger, so we can't go wrong with this. The inscription on the bottom says, from the cheerleaders and the Grim Badgers. So this was a gift, kid's gift to their coat. So let's decipher his name on the plaque. And yeah, we should restore that torn paper too. We're making progress, Ace. Ah, the coach. The coach. Interesting. Again, thanks again for the 80, 80 viewers right now. People that are coming in and out, people that are staying. Um, pretty darn cool. Oh, that's not right. That's just, that's right. Oh, I could have just said his name. Coach, Coach Kirk. Uh, so the football trophy was given to Coach Kirk. I really don't really know the guy. His car's more into video games than sports. This guy looks like a tool. But you're right. If the kids gave him this trophy, he must be well-liked. Who knows? Vicky might have confided in him. Let's have a chat with Coach Kirk. Coach Kirk. I don't think they bring Julian back just to kill him right off the bat. I, don't, I just don't think so, but could be. Plus, he had shot someone on accident. I mean, well, it was on purpose, but he shot them. Uh, strangulation's a little bit more personal. Ace, this letter was addressed to Vicky by a law firm about a court hearing. Lawyers don't like to divulge information about their clients, so it might be tricky to find out more. Ah, you think Ramirez can make some phone calls for us? Well, awesome, let's give this letter to him. Told you guys. We see Ramirez more than we see either of our partners, which I don't mind. In this case, we'll go to uh, we'll go to YouTube uh, later today. Faster, faster, quarterback! Are you taking a nap or what? Coach Kirk, Grimsboro PD. We need to talk. I remember this. I remember this scene. Oh yeah, I've been informed about Vicky's death. Very sad. It will hit the kids hard. But we can't afford to sit and mope. That's not how the Grim Badgers roll. Well, Coach, it seems like the kids look up to you. Did you ever get the impression that Vicky was in trouble? Secret Agent Ace, the kids don't come to me to discuss their troubles. They come because they'll know it'll turn them into champions. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to swig my ginger beer. Young at these sloths is thirsty work. That is totally from the university. That was from um, Madison Springer. Yeah, Madison Springer, I believe. Her, um, her, her, uh, demise. Ace, I've called a lawyer friend. He was able to confirm what this letter here victim was about. When Vicky's parents divorced, Vicky's father set up a trust fund for her, and he's quite wealthy, you see. Initially, Vicky's mother was appointed to manage the fund. However, once Vicky turned 18, she gained full rights over her money. So far, so good. But why is the court involved? Because Mrs. Lopez is contesting the decision. In short, she was taking her own daughter to court over the money. Wow. Ace, I know divorce is difficult, but I'll never understand parents who put, pull such crap on their own kids. Alright, I think we need to see Mrs. Lopez about this. Mrs. Lopez, why were you contesting the decision to give Vicky full access to her father's money? Secret Agent Ace, Vicky might have turned 18, but she was still a child. I didn't want her to blow all the money on makeup and designer handbags. My ex was showering Vicky with cash, but he didn't pay a cent of alimony to me. Hello? I was the one paying the bills. 
I see it. Now that Vicky's dead, you'll inherit her fortune as her next kin. Wait, are you implying I killed my own child for money, secret agent Ace? Well, I had ridiculous accusations thrown at me bef during the divorce, but this really takes the cake. That would be so low. I don't think you should do that. Ace, it's revision time. I feel like this investigation is a tough nut to crack. One lead involves a legal dispute between Vicky and her mother about control over Vicky's money. We also discovered that one of Vicky's classmates has a prior murder conviction. Julian Ramis' prints were found on Vicky's wallet, but that's not enough to charge him. And meanwhile, he talked to Chelsea Bloom out of setting her hair on fire at the drive-in. She was apparently in love with the victim. Ace, I dread the day when my Carter reaches the age of... Um, Gloria, speaking of Carter, I'm afraid the kid had a minor accident in the lab. What? Amir, what happened to my boy? Yikes. Well, anyways, guys, I'll see you guys in Chapter 3 where we're going to arrest this killer. This has been Pitching Easy 8. Over and out.